Welcome to episode 370 of We Don't Die Radio. I'm your host, Sandra Champlain, author of the number one international best-selling book called We Don't Die, A Skeptic's Discovery of Life After Death. And just a quick reminder that our home base is wedontdie.com, and there you can find well over 500 episodes between We Don't Die Radio and my newer show on iHeartRadio called Shades of the Afterlife. We we also host medium classes so you can get in touch with the power of your own soul, a free Sunday gathering complete with medium demonstration, and so much more. Again, that's all at wedontdie.com. Today, I'm so excited to welcome back the wonderful Brian Smith. Brian is definitely a person who has grown through grief after the sudden and tragic passing of his 15 year old daughter back in 2015 he became inspired to live his life to the fullest and to honor her and to make her proud he's the author of the book grief to growth planted not buried how to survive and thrive after life's greatest challenges he hosts the incredible Grief to Growth podcast. He also works personally with people, empowering them through their grief to live their best life. He also offers some wonderful free and small donation ebooks and meditations. And there's so much more you can find out about him on his website, which is grieftogrowth.com. That's the number two, grieftogrowth.com. Brian Smith, welcome back to We Don't Die Radio. Hey, Sandra, so good to see you today. Oh, it's really good to see you. My goodness. I was just looking when we last spoke on this show, and it was where I've written down episode 322 back in July of 2019. Mm. And I am on your email list, and I see how much you are doing. And just first, thank you for taking everything that you've experienced in life and really creating such a powerful world where people can grow through their grief. And I'm just so proud of you. Oh, well, thank I I'm following in your footprints. Uh, after Shana passed away in, in June of 2015. Uh, I don't think I even listened to podcasts before that. And for some reason, I just got inspired to start listening to podcasts. And yours was the first or the second podcast that I that I found. I've listened to pretty much every episode since then uh read your book and just following what you're doing oh thanks so much for that we never know how our lives can make a difference with another person so absolutely everybody even if you don't think it's important share who you are because you just never know you just never know so brian i won't have you revisit everything that you shared on episode 322 but can you tell us a little bit about your story and um Yes, yeah, share whatever you like, really, that's brought you into this world. Obviously, we like talking about the afterlife and stories of the afterlife. But tell us about you. Yeah, I will. Uh, just really quickly, I, I grew up in a religion that taught me a lot of fear. Um, I was I was scared of God. I was scared of God existing and sending me to hell or God not existing me and me just blinking out when I died. Uh, I was a weird little kid. I took all that to heart. It, it literally gave me panic attacks. I had a, an intense fear of death. I would call it the natophobia, um, a, a serious fear of death, where it was like pretty much every day I knew I was going to die early. Um, so I got over that, uh, went to counseling, et cetera. But I really dug deep into my faith, into I'm, I'm an engineer by background, by nature. I'm a chemical engineer. So I went to look at science, philosophy, et cetera. So I dug into all this stuff. To find out what is this all about? Why are we here? What what's the, what's this about? Why are we? Why do we have so much pain, suffering, etc.? So I felt like I got had a pretty decent handle on that. And then in June of 2015, my daughter was 15 years old. Her name is Shana Elaine Smith, and she passed away in her sleep. Just we went to wake her up that morning. It was a Wednesday morning, day like any other day. I was out for a walk, came back from my walk, sitting in my office working, and my wife. I uh, was trying to, I've been trying to raise Shana on, on text because Shana was supposed to come downstairs and work and Shana wasn't responding. And we found her un, unresponsive. So that was the next chapter of my life, taking all this that I had learned and studied and seeing if I could actually apply it when I'm, you know, going through this. So um, found you, found other podcasts, found Helping Parents Heal, 
an organization I volunteer with even to that to this day. I'm on the board of Helping Parents Heal. And did that as a lay person for about three or four years, decided three years ago, this is what I'm here to do. This is what my mission is. So I started Grief to Growth, wrote the book, became a, a coach, life coach. I'm a certified grief educator. And I'm actually in writing, just about putting the finishing touches on a program that I'm going to use to people to kind of formalize all the stuff I've learned over the years, put it into an organized format to roll it out to people. So um, life is interesting. As you and I were talking about before we started recording, it's ever changing. We don't know what it's going to throw at us. And we have to figure out how do we bounce back? How do we how do we deal with the grief that we all grow, grow through? Yeah. And grief isn't just when a loved one dies. Can you talk Absolutely. a little bit about that? Because I know we get all kinds of people that watch and listen to this show, but yeah. can you talk about some I, of those things. I think that's really important to say. Um, grief is not just grief is any loss. So we were talking earlier, I don't think it's a secret, your, your mother's going through some, a health thing. I've gone through that with both of my in-laws. My parents are still healthy, but both my in-laws uh, with dementia and seeing them diminish. And so you grieve them before they're gone because their personalities have changed and they're not who they were. Loss of a job, which I've been fired twice. Getting divorced, I've been divorced. Um, moving can be a grief event. event. You know, anything that where it's something that's unexpected or something that, that provides or presents a loss to you. Um, so these are things that we all go through. The thing about grief is it's universal. If you're on this planet long enough, you are going to experience grief. It's just, it's just part of the human condition. So my mission is to help people figure out how do I deal with this? How, do, how can I use this to serve myself and to serve others? How do I survive it first? And then how do I maybe come out of it even better? Great. Thank you for that. In a minute, I'm going to ask you some of your life after death stories and, and what you know about that. But I just want to talk a little bit more about the grief to growth concept, because I think, and I'm sure you feel this way too, grief has the power to kill us. It really does. There's a just a high percentage of people that have ended their own life because of the deep grief that they've been in. But also, it is an opportunity to grow. And I love grief to growth and your logo, because I think of the great forests that are around the world and the only way that they can reseed themselves is the pine cones need to get to a certain temperature. And that's through a vast burning of the whole forest for there to be regrowth. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, it's really interesting you brought that up because I just recorded a guided meditation. I actually recorded it a couple of years ago uh, and it's called The Time to Wait, but I was just... Friday, my, my Shana's birthday, I was laying the video over top of it. And one of the analogies I use is the, is the lodgepole pine, the pine cones that, that, that come that are, their seeds are released through the fire. So my approach to, to helping people with grief is, first of all, it's temporary. Everything that we go through here is, is temporary. Um, and it can be here to service. I love, and I don't love the phrase time heals all wounds because time doesn't heal wounds. We need time to heal wounds. And we, so we, we do need that, that container of time. But one of the very first experiences I had going to grief counseling, it was actually a group experience. There was a woman there, her, her daughter had passed away like 10 years before. And that woman was just as bitter as the day her daughter passed away. And I remember, cause I was early and I was like, I was at that time thinking I was never going to heal. I never could heal. I didn't even want to heal. But when I saw that woman, I was like, this is a choice. We all, we all have a choice. So we can choose to heal or we can choose not to heal. We can choose to get bitter or we can choose to get better. Um, and grief can crush us. I mean, Lisa Marie Presley just passed away a few days ago. And some people say she died of a broken heart. We can never know that. But grief does, it, it's hard. It's real. You know, it's, it's not like some people say this world is an illusion and the pain is an illusion. It's not. It's not an illusion. It's not the ultimate reality, but it's very real. And you, you know, anybody going through it can tell you that it's very real. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I've never contemplated taking my own self out of this life, but I know when my dad died over 10 years ago and the grief, not only from his passing, but you know, it was, we were one of those sibling families that fought and I, I hit an all time low that I realized 
you know, I'm not here to judge anybody else's journey, but there is a point and I felt it that I thought, geez, if I, I, I can understand people in this mindset that they, they don't think that there's any way out of this um, because it hurts so bad. And um, I'm grateful that I had that grief to growth because it led me on an investigation of grief and why it has to hurt so bad. And I mm -hmm. had the guts to start sharing what I'd learned about the afterlife. And, you know, here we are so many years later with just tens of thousands of people that have been touched by your words, my words, and, you know, all the other people doing what they're doing. So I'm glad I, to be I, here. I do want to take a moment. I want to normalize that, you know, um, I didn't I didn't actively kind of contemplate suicide like I'm going to do it or make a plan. But I've talked to at this point hundreds of parents who have lost children. And it's almost universal that we don't want to be here. And we may not make a plan. We may not say we're going to take ourselves out, but it's like I don't care anymore. I remember and I remember very specifically one day I was I lived near Kentucky. And my family, my wife's family is Kentucky. I was driving through Kentucky. It's a beautiful day. I'm on the highway. And I remember thinking I could just turn my car and hit this, this bridge abutment and it would be over and I'd be with Shana. And I, that's a very normal thought. So I want people to understand if you're having those types of thoughts, I think we all do. I think we all almost all go through that phase where it's like the pain is just not worth it. And, you know, I just want this, this pain to end and it can end, you know, we can, we can, we can work our way through it. So it's just, it's hanging in there. And sometimes it's, sometimes it's minute by minute, you know, it's not even day by day. It's like, can you just make it through the next minute, the next hour? Absolutely. And I think you like me, I know you like me, are people that want to educate people the most we can on the world of grief, because I don't believe we are trained to learn about grief. Like, well, I don't think there's a lot we're trained to learn about as human beings. Yeah. We just find it the hard way. But with all the research that we've done and when we start to understand that this world of grief is something that parts of it are autopilot parts of it as our biology is changing trying to reformat to new reality and it helps people to hear i think that even though you may not like it and you may feel these really dark times it's a part of grief that a lot of people go through. So you, if you're watching this right now and, and you've hit that point, you're not alone in it. And there are some tools to help move you through, to help you feel better um, and get to the other side. So yeah, we are, we're here. And we'll, I know Brian gives a lot away and through all of his um, things on your website and all the podcasts you do, I mean, you are a giver. Oh my goodness. Well, your your audio, I was telling someone the other day, because I, I, I recorded my book on Audible and some I was I was doing an interview with Tito Jackson's kids, which is really wild. But I was I was recording this interview and then we were talking about that book and they said, you know, you put it out in Audible format. You know, why did you do that? And I said, Well, one of the reasons was I still remember listening to your audio right after Shana passed away. My wife and I lying on the bed upstairs and listening to that to, together. And the way that you normalized grief and the things that we go through and the way that you help people understand this is what's happening to your brain, for example, you know, I'm, you're not crazy. You're not alone. Everybody's grief journey is unique, but on the other hand, there's some things about it that are universal. And I remember listening to a parent who had written a book. She was being interviewed in a program. She talked about thinking about taking your life, you know, as, as almost a casual thought. And that helped me so much. So what I want to do with people is like, I want, I do want to help normalize those feelings that we go through to say that you, we have endured it. You have endured it. I've endured it. So you can too. Yeah. We may not like it, but we can endure it and we can absolutely thrive because each one of us, I mean, somebody watching or listening right now, they may never have a podcast or write a book, but your experience might be just the thing somebody needs to hear, whether you're in line at a grocery store or sitting next to somebody in the airplane, you know, you share your grief and your growth and it could be just the words. So Brian, let's shift gears a little bit because we love to talk about the afterlife. We love to know that our loved ones are, are still around. Between your own story with Shana and also I don't even know how many podcast episodes you now have, but you have interviewed some people with some incredible stories. Can we have a little story time with Brian? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, 
Well, I have, I think it's probably around 200 episodes now. I, I don't really, I don't know exactly. But um, yeah, I've, I've interviewed people who have had just amazing, you know, signs, synchronicities, um, afterlife visits, you know, all, all the things that you and I love to talk about. Um, you know, I, I had a little sign. Shane's birthday was was Friday. It was her 23rd birthday. And birthdays are rough days. Um, all those days are, are still rough for me. So I was having a rough day, but I was getting through it. I'm listening to um, Christian Sundberg's book, A Walk in the Physical, which it was helping me a lot. So I listened to that in the morning and I was working on the meditation I was working on. And it was, I was just as I was working on the meditation, I get a text from the guy who actually did the music and sound effects for the meditation, which he and I only talk every several months. And I just thought about him. And just as I thought about him, I get a text from him. And that's something that we call a synchronicity. And again, I'm working this guided meditation for grief. So I'm like on my daughter's birthday. And I'm like, to me, I took that as, as kind of a little bit of a sign of one of those little winks. Um, Shane has done things as incredible as like I do have the podcast. And one day I'm looking at, at my podcast feed on my phone. And every podcast cover of every episode have been changed to a picture of Shana. And it's a picture of Shana when she was like two or three years old. She's playing with these blocks. I still remember this day. I remember taking the picture. It's one of my favorite pictures ever because it just showed her determination. She had built a tower that was over her head. And she's like two years old. But I'm looking at it. I'm like, how did this happen? And I'm panicking because it's like, did this happen across like all my platforms and everything? So I get on my computer and I check my podcast feed. Everything looks normal. Check it in another browser. Everything looks normal. It was only on my phone that this happened, that all these podcast covers had changed to a picture of Shana. And then I don't know what time and period they actually just went back and they're they're normal. But I'm actually glad I documented it because I actually have pictures. I have screenshots of this, of this thing happening. So, I mean, it's been eight years now and it's just been incredibly numerous that the first sign I had from Shana, and they seem to come up like when you really need them. So she'd just been passed away for about six weeks. It was in August. And the three of us were going on vacation. My daughter, Kayla, and my, my wife and I were just taking a, a, like a long weekend trip. And it's, it was rough. I mean, I'm, I'm doing my morning walk. I can do every morning. And I'm doing I'm like, Shana, I don't know if I can make it through this day, you know, unless you give me some sort of a sign. And I'm new at this. I'm, I didn't even know about signs before. So I said, now, let's not do pennies. Let's do dimes. If I see a dime, I'm going to know it's from you. So I finished my walk. My wife and daughter, you know, they get up. We get we get on, to get in the van to take us across to the ferry to go to the island. And my wife and daughter get like in the second row, I think, of the van. And I decided for some reason not to sit with them. I got behind them. So as I bend down to get behind them, I look underneath the seat that they're sitting on. And there's a single dime sitting there. So again, I'm an engineer. I like to calculate odds as much as I can. I'm like, that could have been a quarter. It could have been a dollar. It could have been nothing. Um, if I hadn't made that move that I did to turn the way I did and look down, I wouldn't have seen it. So I'm like, what are the odds of me actually finding that dime on that day after I prayed that prayer to my daughter? So those are just a few really quick examples of things I can think of. Yeah. And how does it make you feel when you get one? Because I mean, does that other side of your mind go, oh, that's just a synchronicity or that's just a, you know, I don't know. You know, I'm trying to say the skeptical side. Yeah. Well, you know, what's really interesting, Sandra, for me, I am, again, I, I mentioned I'm an engineer. I'm a very rational person. And even worse than that, I'm like, I grew up thinking the universe is either cold or cruel. It's it's not, certainly not good, right? It's either, it either doesn't care about me or it's just torturing people. Um, since Shana has passed, I've come to understand the universe is actually a magical place. Uh, and it's not really magic. There is order behind it. And so I'm learning so much. I'm so excited about the things I'm learning now. So I just listened to Bernardo Kastrup's book where he talks about Carl Jung. And Jung talks a lot about synchronicities and archetypes. And so we think the universe is cause and effect, Newtonian, right? This happens and this happens. And quantum physics tells us it's not like that. It's much more orderly than we think. It's much more controlled by consciousness. And in fact, the universe is consciousness. So when these things happen now, my mindset has shifted to like, when something happens, I look for what's the reason behind this? What, if, what is this here to teach me? You know, why did this happen? I look at the universe, this, this world that we happen to live in, this earth is 
it's a collective consciousness experiment. It's kind of like a collective dream where we all create the world. We don't, we don't understand our power. Um, and again, this is not just woo-woo stuff. This is not wishful thinking. This is Bernardo Castro, if I've read a lot of his book, Lynn McTaggart's talk about the power of intention. You know, a lot of scientists are now starting to understand that we live in an intention-driven universe. So the the signs and synchronicities, I uh, I don't I don't even like the word spiritual too much anymore. The word afterlife because it's all one big continuum, and we just don't really understand it yet. So I, I'm trying to help people understand, have, expand their point of view, expand their worldview. It's good to do that because it, it's so easy to be get get caught in we well, are just human, you know, just human. But every so often, you know, when I get caught up in my own stuff, because I do, I'm not always this happy go lucky person. I I stew in my misery sometimes. Mm -hmm. But you know, I look out on the beautiful earth and I just think, okay, long ago the earth was formed. And then, you know, eventually there was life and trees and vegetation and water and all that. And then you think of those basic elements and out of those basic ele elements, we have everything. We have our computers, our phones, our houses, our plastic, you know, so, okay, that's pretty miraculous. And then like last night I was looking to, for something to watch just before I fell asleep and I stumbled upon a show called Infinity on Netflix. I think it's called Infinity. I only watched a couple of minutes, but it was enough to make my mind think because we live in an ever expanding universe, mm -hmm. right? So what are we, the heck is it expanding into? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then in the, on the quantum level through science, it, it's an, it, it's infinite, <laughs> you know, from our cells to the atoms that make us up. It, it, and I always say this, if we put a tiny camera inside one of our uh, atoms, you know, there'd be nothing to record. All we are is vibrating energy. So mm -hmm. there is, to an extent, you know, an illusion going on here, a very real mm -hmm. one with the pain, as you say. But what what are we capable of human as human beings? You know, what is this consciousness? And whether we use the word afterlife, hereafter, we're all connected. I mean, they are our loved ones are part of this. So are we, and I don't believe maybe we were ever born or we ever die. I'd, will we figure it all out when we cross over? Probably not. But the, the truth is, is that we live on. Well, and the, the thing is we have, we have fallen into the dream. We have bought into the virtual reality and that's cool. And it's, so what I, what I do now is actually I, with myself, I have lucid dreams sometimes and in my dreams, I can actually real, I'm, I'll look around and say, this is really cool because I've created this entire, you know, existence and I can touch that wall and I can feel the sun on my face. So every once in a while, I'll, I'll be sitting in my office like I am right now. And I'll look around and I'm like, this is a really cool illusion because that's what it is. This is, this is a, this is a dream. It's a, it's a virtual reality. It's a game, whatever you want to call it. Consciousness is fundamental and matter the, the things that we think are real exist within consciousness and so that perspective it's not it was, it's really interesting because we you know we, we separate um like this world from the, the quote afterlife and I, I was just i asked people when they enter my group i asked them a couple of questions it's like one are you interested in learning about grief and overcoming your grief and two are you interested in learning more about death and the afterlife and almost universally people say yes and yes because that's why they joined my group but I just got one from someone that said, yes, I'm interested in overcoming my grief, but no, I'm not interested in learning about the afterlife and death. And I'm like, I don't think you can do that. <laughs> I, I don't see how you do that without understanding the big picture about understanding like who we are, because it's putting that into perspective that allows me to go forward. It's saying that just like in the dream I had the other night where I was really disturbed and really upset and in my dream, I was really in danger. When I woke up in my bed, I said to myself, that was just a dream. I was never in that danger. I, that that didn't really happen. I think when we open our eyes on the other side, we look back at this life and go, wow, that was really wild. That was really a, that was really a great adventure. And Shane and I love to play video games. And the, the video game analogy just works so well for me because when you're playing a video game, you get all into your character. You know, you just, you're into it. 
And Shayna would pick up our, we would play Super Mario, or Mario Brothers, and she'd pick up our characters and throw them into the lava. <laughs> just this part, just playing her out. You know, and that's that's about how much this life, and I don't mean this life doesn't mean anything, but we have many lives. We don't just have one life as a, as a human being. So when we can keep that perspective, all that perspective, it just lessens the pain a lot. Yeah, I agree. Wow, throw into the lava. Oh. <laughs> Tell us about some of the uh, your favorite stories and your favorite guests that you've had on your podcast, Grief to Growth. Oh wow, wow, that's that's hard. Okay, so um, Bernardo Castro, I was I just mentioned earlier. He's one of my he's one of my heroes, and he's a he's a computer scientist and a PhD in philosophy, and he promotes this idea of idealism, which is like my my new worldview, which I've just been explaining the whole time we've been talking here about how consciousness is fundamental. So I had the I had the opportunity to have him on um, to explain that from that very rational kind of scientific perspective. Uh, just recently, I, inter- I released an episode with Mark Anthony, who is an incredible medium. I've, I've been lucky to spend some time with Mark. I was at a conference with him. A uh, couple of times, but just most recently in August, we spent a few days together at this conference. Guy is brilliant, and and he's a medium, so he's explained mediumship to me better than any medium I've ever spoken with. Now there are great mediums out there; I know a lot of them, but for Mark to break it down the way he did, um, that to me was really helpful. Um, Natalie Sudman, one of the near death experiences I had, I've read her book, uh, Application of Impossible Things, at least three or four times. I love the way she her experience you know, breaks it down and explains like, why do we have injuries, right? So she has this experience when she's blown up in an IED uh, explosion in in, uh, the Middle East. And as she's in the afterlife, you know, in this in between state, she's playing around with these different injuries. Let's, let's make her blind. Let's make her missing a leg, you know, from this, from the perspective of the soul, it was just so, so light, you know, Um, so that, that was an interesting one. Uh, Frankie Key, Francis Key, I've had her on my my podcast, I think three or four times. She's written a series of books called The Team. The Team books are my Bible. I read them all the time. Um, so I've been able to have her on. I've had, I, I, I could go on. So I'll, I'll just stop with those. Well, I don't mind if you go on. It's all good. It, um, just when you say, you know, books are your Bible, how do you keep yourself inspired? Because I can't imagine anybody can stay positive all the time. Do you have a collection of things you listen to, books you listen to, things that you can remind yourself of the the bigger picture? Yeah, um, actually, I just uh, created a new PDF, which I'm giving free to your, well, it's free, but I'm giving it to your guests. So if you go to grieftogrowth.com slash Sandra, uh, it's my, my new book is there, it's called Gems. Um, so after I've gone through this for seven and a half years now, I realized I've kind of systematized a little bit of it. So GEMS is my acronym I use for gratitude, exercise, uh, meditation and mindfulness and self-care. So those are four things I do on a daily basis. So the first thing I do when I wake up in the morning before I get out of bed is I try to think of three things that I'm grateful for. Um, so it could be like, it's today it's sunny in Ohio that's unusual in the winter um it might be that the Bengals won last night which they did um it could be them having dinner with friends it could be little things and uh through my interviews I've realized that everybody can do that so for other people it's like what if it's just like if you're when you're in the shower feeling the warm water just just feeling the water and those somatic experiences so gratitude and and I was the biggest like gratitude practices baloney myself I remember I bought the book, The Power of Positive Thinking. I threw it in the trash can. I'm not necessarily a believer that gratitude like changes the world. I think maybe it does in a sense, but it can change you. And as I've practiced it over the years, I've realized that there's always something to be grateful for. Always, always, always. If in this moment, for, for 99% of the time, if you think about just where you are in this moment, as, I, as you sit in a chair listening to this, or as you're driving your car listening to this, Everything is probably okay. You probably are well fed. You're clothed. You're warm. Or you're cool. Whatever the, the seasons around you. So if we can focus on this moment, we can practice gratitude, and that changes everything. Second thing is exercise. I walk six miles every morning. It's the first thing I do. 
uh, because I have a very sedentary job and I used to have a Fitbit. I saw the Apple watch and it's, they said 10,000 steps a day. So I'm the kind of person that's like, I'm going to get 10,000. The only way to get that is by walking six miles. So it's like 11,000 steps for me. So the first thing I do in the morning is I walk those, those six miles. And I usually listen to a book. Like I said, right now I'm listening to Christian Sundberg's book. I listen to podcasts. I listen to like your podcast. Um, sometimes I walk in silence. I'll do a, a silent meditation, but something to get my body moving, which is really, really important. Being outside, I think is really important. Uh, the other thing is sleep. So that's like the, the, the other side of that is making sure you go to bed at, at you know, a good time that you're doing good sleep hygiene. Um, you know, so that's important. So it's, it, our bodies need to move and they also need to rest. And we have to do both of those things. Mindfulness and meditation, extremely important. So many people don't like to do it. So many people don't understand it. I help people understand how you can do it. We can all do it. If you if you can't do it, you just haven't found what works for you yet. So it's important to reinforce that big picture. I also teach positive intelligence, which is what I call mental fitness training. So how do I keep reinforcing? Because I that like you said, we can't stay positive all the time. That our saboteurs, we have these things that live in our head that tell us lies, like you're not good enough, that nobody really likes you, that you're you're an imposter. You'll never be happy. You'll never be successful. All those things, it's we all have that. So we're always having to push back against that. So that's what mindfulness helps us do. It helps us to, to make that practice to stay in that in the moment, like I was talking about earlier. And then self-care in general, I talk about um, is like it's really important. You know, people sometimes think self-care is selfish. I don't have time for that. I'm I'm a busy person. I have a job. I'm I'm a mother, so I have to take care of my children. It's like if you don't take care of yourself first, you won't be there for anybody else. So I, I give people like techniques and things you can do, like take yourself out to dinner if you if that's what you want to do. Or cook. If you like to cook, cooking a meal for yourself could be self-care. Um, when we're in grief, you know, sometimes people say, I'm not being very productive. There are times I'll just take a mental health day. I'm like, today I'm just gonna watch Netflix. And I do it intentionally. It's not like I'm doing it like I'm just zoning. I'm like, this is going to be my self-care. I'm going to go watch some TV now. Um, I work five, six, seven days a week. So some days I'll say, I'm just not going to work today. I'm just not going to do you know anything. So those could be things that, so for me, uh, like I said, those are the practices that I do on a daily basis because we can't just, it's not just going to happen. We have, we have to make it happen. We have to have a practice. Yeah, I mean, we um, most of us have learned to brush our teeth twice a day and make that a practice. We can do these things. We absolutely can. And I was, I, I haven't really checked out every page on your website for a while. And I'm so thrilled at all that you offer and lots that you give away. And I saw something on self-love and I'm like, oh my gosh, look at all these wonderful things Brian's doing and the, the meditations and things. Can you talk about some of those things that... Um, we're on your website. Yeah. Well, as I said, there's a guided meditation that I just put out. Um, it's called a time to wait. It's actually, I, I put it on YouTube. It's, it's been out for a while. I've had it available to download as an audio. Um, but um, I'm rebranding my business and, and trying to expand my business. I'm working with the coach and she said, there needs to be a mindfulness, uh, uh, a meditation on grief on YouTube because there aren't that many out there. So I, I put that out there. Um, Self-care is these are things that I, I've, I haven't been good at myself. I'm, I'm terrible at self-care. I've always been one of those kind of people just push through. And I've realized that self-care is really important. Uh, mindfulness practice, I just, I, I've been off and on with that before Shana passed away. But now I'm very, very um, uh, intentional about it. Um, I actually did like, I forgot how many thousands of days it was in a row. Because I'm the kind of person, I got Insight Timer, the app. I took a challenge. It said it was a 365-day challenge. I did it for like four years. So four years, every single day I meditated. Um, then I said, yeah, I don't do, need to do it every day. So sometimes I take a day off, you know, every once in a while. But generally speaking, I meditate twice a day. So um, as I said, it's it's important to to make it intentional. Yeah. Well, talk about some things. We'll get back to your website. But um mm -hmm some tips you'd give for meditation because there's different words for it meditation mindfulness sitting in the power different different 
intentions and all that. But I feel it's just as necessary as plugging in our iPhone or our computer so it'll work. What do you, do you can give us some tips if we're new to it or yeah. how to get started? I have, I'm, I'm still learning. I'm learning a lot. And I just took a class with a guy named Kelvin Chen and Kelvin is, is amazing just, just in general, but um, he teaches a technique called turning within. And what I've realized over the years is like, everybody teaches all these different techniques for meditation. And everybody's worried, am I doing it right? Am I doing it wrong? Am I saying my mantra right? Am I sitting properly? Am I doing this? There is no wrong way to, to meditate other than to say, I'm doing it the wrong way. It's being in the moment. So I was talking with uh, a, a client the other day and they were saying, well, whenever I try to meditate, I fall asleep. If that's what your body needs and if that's what happens in your meditation time, that's fine. That's not a fail. That's not a like you didn't meditate properly. You got what you needed. Um, other people have said to me, every time I meditate, I just start crying. That's okay. It's whatever you're experiencing in the moment is okay. So mindfulness or meditation is just with intention, being in the moment that you're in. You can meditate right now. And I, I'll take people through when I have I have one-on-ones with them. There was a client, again, she said, I can't really, I can't meditate, you know? So I said, let's just do this five-minute exercise. So I had her close her eyes. I took her through a five-minute exercise. And when it was over, and it was just like, rub your fingers together, you know, with your eyes closed and just feel your fingers. Feel your legs, you know, against your chair. Feel, you know, close your eyes and listen to the farthest away sound you can hear. And listen to the closest sound you can hear, just being in your body. And if you try this, what you'll find is the future falls away. You're not thinking about what you have to do in the future. The past falls away. You're not thinking about the regrets you had in the past. You're just experiencing the moment. And that's what, that's what mindfulness is. It's just being in your body in the moment, right where you are right now. And there's so many ways you can practice that you can, I like to listen to music. So sometimes I'll listen to music. And when you get in that zone, you're listening to music and you're part of the music. That's when you're in that moment. And it's, it's sometimes I'll do that with the song. I'll put a song on and I'll just sit and pick out each, each instrument and just totally focus on that instrument. So there's, there's a myriad of ways to, to practice mindfulness and everybody has a fine work for them. Some people can't sit still. I, I interviewed a guy not too long ago and he does uh, Aikido and uh, he was talking about how that's part of his mindfulness practice that I can't sit. So it's like, that's, that's what I do. And I, I, I know a woman, she power lifts um, and that's when she gets into the zone. So whatever gets you in that zone. Yeah. Different strokes for different folks. It's fun to explore. And I've worked with enough mediums and even taken courses myself to know that when you can quiet your mind to a certain place, I think it's just just like exercising at a gym and building a muscle mm -hmm. when you're that present. I don't want to call them miracles because even though they feel like miracles, but we can tap in to the other side, we can lower our blood pressure, healing can occur. Uh, you know, yes, some things come out of the mind. Someone had once told me that it's like a bilge pump sometimes when we meditate because just stuff comes up. But, you know, I think we all have stuff deep in our subconscious minds that, you know, if we let it out, there's room for, for more things. So you had mentioned your coaching, Brian. Can you talk us a little bit about that? Because I know there are people that you may struggle with grief and you think I'm going to do this alone. Um, but there's also people that just need a need a friend need somebody to kind of not necessarily hold their hand, but we be with them be supportive say, this is natural normal, there is an, another side to it. And you are such a caring and likable person that um, yeah, I'd love to share what you're doing with your coaching work. Yeah, what I've done with my coaching thus far has been just one on one. And um, I meet with people by zoom, and we talk about where they are, where they want to go. And it's, it's um, and it's been great. I, I, I've, I've met some incredible people. I've, I've helped a lot of people. It's really cool. I was talking to one client a little while ago, and she'd been with me for about a year, maybe. And her son's birthday was, was there like around Christmas. And she was, excuse me, telling me about some of the things she was doing you know, around around his birthday. And I, after I got off the call there, I was like, wow, that's all the stuff that I was telling her that she should do. Um, and I was so proud that she was doing it. It was working for her. So I'm in the process right now. I was telling you earlier that I, 
I just hired a, a business growth coach. And one of the things she's encouraged me to do is to kind of, it's to formalize what I'm doing. So I'm, I'm just at the beginning, just about ready to, to launch this, where it's going to be more of a formal program where you can sign up and say, we're going to go through these, these various steps. Um, and that's, that's, that'll be uh, probably by the end of the month, I'll have that, that ready to actually roll out. But what I do with people is it's reframing. It's shifting that perspective. It's like, yes, your grief is real. Yes, your pain is real. And yes, that's part of being human to have this grief and this pain. But what if you planned it? What if we came here knowing that this world is like this? What if we came here for the challenge, not to avoid the challenges, but to go through the challenges for the purpose of growing, for the purpose of having the experience? What if your loved one is still with you? No, not you're going to see them again, which I always believed, which is true. But what if they're still with you? What if they're still here cheering you on? Um, so we we have those types of conversations to try to help people to um, speed up, I guess, is the, the natural healing process. I, the, we, we can choose to heal. And, and I was, you know, there's people say, well, do we ever get over grief? I don't think we get over it. Does it get easier? I, I always answer that yes and no. It gets easier in the sense that if you go to the gym, you lift weights every day. When you first start going to the gym, doing a 100-pound bench press might be beyond your ability. But if you do it every day, now you're bench pressing 200 pounds. If someone gives you a 100-pound bar, it's like you just, you know, it's easy. That's how grief becomes. It's like I don't think it gets easier. It's, it's just we learn to deal with it better. I still have these moments, you know, as I said, Friday, Shane's birthday, that was, that was a tough day for me, you know, but I can shift out of it faster because I've built this mental muscle, this spiritual muscle, because I've gotten stronger in, in, in knowing the truth. When, when the lies come to me, I can shift faster. So I help people to recognize the truth, to hold on to the truth. And when the lies come to shift back into that truth faster um we're not here to bypass all of it we're not here to 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 just get over it and we're always going to miss the physicality of our loved ones that have gone in the spirit before us but uh when it happens I, like on friday i guess i was listening to that book i put on stephanie mills i sent you the song home um i put that song on and the tears flow but i feel my loved ones and i feel them right now around me and behind me you know, with their hands on my shoulders, and I can walk through that. So I do with people it's like, you can do this, you can, you can take these practices, you can do these things. And you can hold this point of view, that's going to make it much better for you. No, oh, thanks so much. Uh, yes, I know, even a commercial for a Hallmark card can reignite my grief, you know, and even though it's been a while since my dad has passed, those memories are still there and things can be reignited, but we do have the tools. And also through our toughest times, really, we do have that capability to grow. And I think for each one of us, once we start to share who we really are, and we are each one of a kind with our own passions and uniqueness and crazy senses of humor and things, but when we really start to get in the zone of sharing who we are and setting our sights to helping somebody else through, doesn't have to be anything big, but when you can start setting your eyes on other people and, and just sharing who you are, I think whether it's the universe or whomever kicks in, I, I feel like I was rewarded with the, the best friends, the best community, tapping into the miraculous almost every day and witnessing just so many special things. And none of that would come without the hardship. So I think if you're going through a really tough patch right now, knowing that there is growth for the soul happening. And at some point you will look back and you'll go, Oh my gosh, that happened exactly how it did. And then these other things happened. Yeah. There's, um, there's a, a, a Taoist story that I love. It talks about, it's a farmer who finds a, a wild stallion. And, uh, the thing is, as he's as he's going through all these events, all of his neighbors are saying, this is good, this is bad, this is good, this is bad. And the farmer just always responds with maybe, you know, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, I have the benefit, uh, the privilege of being 61 years old now. I've been through a lot. 
And I've seen things in my life that I, I hated. I pushed back against. I said, I don't, I don't want this. A, a loss, a loss of a job, a loss of a relationship. Uh, when my parents took me out of my school when I was in seventh grade, and took me away from all my friends. That was a grief event for me. But I've also been able, been, been around long enough to see how they've worked out. How when I lost that job, I got a better job. And I would not have gotten that better job if I hadn't been forced out of the other job. So as we look back at our lives through hindsight, you can probably think of things that have happened to you that you've said, I don't want this, but you've seen how it benefited you. So if we can just, I, I, if we play the game and we fast forward to now I'm on the other side and I look back at this life and I see how all the puzzle, puzzle pieces come together and we see the growth that came from it from that hardship that we wouldn't have had without the hardship, then we can see how it might be worth it. And this, this idea, when we first bring it up to people, especially people in grief, say, I would never, ever choose this. And uh, I will, or another thing is, I will never come back here again. Um, but if we look at analogies in our own lives, we choose challenges for ourselves. I love, I love reality TV. I admit, I love reality TV. And everybody knows Survivor, but there's a show called Alone which is make survivor look like child's play. You go out, it's literally you, you got like 10 items. There's not even a camera crew. You film yourself. You're totally isolated. And it's you against the elements in Canada in the winter. And I watched that show and people, um, I tell people, they're like, well, why would they do that? Well, there is money now that before, I think when they first started, there wasn't even money, but they don't do it for the money. They do it for the adventure. They do it for the experience. They want to see if they can do it. We human beings on earth, and not everybody, not every soul incarnates, by the way, not every soul comes to earth, but the ones of us that came here, we are the adventurers. We're the ones that said, and you might not think you're an adventurer, I didn't either, but if you're here, you are. And you are seen as like the baddest of the bad. You are the, you are, we are the people that said, give it to me. Let me take on this challenge because we want to have the experience and we want to have the growth. And if you start to think about it from that perspective, when things happen to you, you can get curious about it. You can say, why is, why is this happening? What can I do with this? So um, yeah, that's, that's, it's very, very real. The pain is very real, but it, it's there for our benefit. This whole, this whole system is set up is here for our benefit. Yeah, it really is. And whether we choose, I don't, I don't think we choose everything that happens in our life that get kind of busy, yeah. but we can learn and we can definitely wear a pair of glasses that, okay, this has happened for me. Where can I learn? What can I do? And be empowered by it. I have some friends and also I have a, a, a calendar I look at every day with a motivational quote first thing in the morning. Mm -hmm. And today's was do one thing every day that you fear. And our friends, Phil and Carrie say that every day. The um, dreams, miracles, soul growth, even being proud of yourself happens when you can step outside of that comfort zone. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, absolutely. We, it's, I think we're, we're creative beings and we're, we're adventuresome beings. And some of us are more adventuresome than others. It's interesting, you know, being here on this planet, like I don't, I will never skydive. And I was just thinking about this this morning. It's like, why would people do that? And I think there, I don't know, there may be souls on the other side to look at us and say, why would people go to earth? Why would, why would you put yourself through that? But when we do those things, you know, I love sports. You know, I, and I, was, I was watching the football game last night. We go and we set up these rules, right? We set up challenges. We throw this little ball around. And why do we do it? Just to see if we can, you know? And we have other people trying to stop us from doing it just to see if we can. That's just the way, that's human nature. And I think we come here in this, in this world and we say, let me see if I can handle my daughter passing away when, when she's 15. Let me see how that makes me grow. How do I, how am I going to respond to that? Let me see how I'm going to respond if I, if I lose my job, you know, we set up these challenges to see how we do. And if, again, if you think about it in your own life, there's probably things you're very proud of that you overcame, that you look back and go, wow, I didn't think I could do that, but I, I did it. And I'm, and I'm glad I did it. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, Brian, I want to make a, just a few brief announcements, and then I think we'll come back to you for some closing thoughts and how we can get in touch with you and how we can see all your good things. And you can remind everybody about that special link. Thank you for creating that. Sure. Just some upcoming things. First of all, we love Brian, don't we? He's just great. 
He will be our special guest speaker on our Sunday gathering on February 12th, Sunday, February 12th. It happens live at two o'clock New York time, Eastern time, but it is global. We have several hundred people every week who join us live on Zoom. And if you can't make it live, the link becomes the replay link. Or if you are listening to this in 2024, 2025, you can simply go to We Don't Die dot com click on the sunday gathering link and you can just scroll back down to february 12th 2023 and be part of that and each week on our sunday gathering i'm so proud because we do celebrate life we celebrate the afterlife we uh, we aim to inspire so there's a different theme every sunday brian will help me create the theme for february 12th and pick some of his favorite music for that but we also have a medium demonstration included in that. And it's an opportunity, not only from friends who are now living in the spirit world, friends and family to have their voice heard again, heard again, but it's an opportunity for everybody just to see how close they really are. Because each and every week we hear evidence that our loved ones are with us. Certainly they're living their life in the afterlife. There's work to do and fun to be had and things to explore and things they didn't get to do on earth they are continuing to do there but they are only a heartbeat or a breath away from us and they can multitask so it's just mind-blowing to me to see just how close they are and to hear some of their advice for living a powerful life it's really special so you can find all those at we don't die.com. Also, every week we hold online classes. You can come live, you can watch a replay. To me, there is nothing better than seeing the power of your own soul in action. When you take one of our medium classes, for instance, you learn how our soul communicates and you learn how to use your feelings to do a reading with someone, whether it's psychic or mediumistic, and you think things that come into your imagination are just your imagination. You find out pretty soon that this is how the spirit world and your soul communicate. So it, there's magic in those classes. There really are. We always have uh, things coming up, whether it's classes or demonstrations. And of course, you can get a free copy of my book. If you go to the store page, scroll down, you'll see the We Don't Die audio book. Just use coupon code FREE, F-R-E-E, -E, be my guest and enjoy that. And also you can uh, go to the radio show page and you can see both this show, We Don't Die Radio, with 370 episodes now. And then also you can click on the link for my latest show, which is on iHeartRadio called Shades of the Afterlife. And I just finished recording episode 118 of that, which is insane, insane. Uh, there's a little bit more of me on that show with different topics, and there is some interviewing guests, but it's a lot more of the latest research and evidence of the afterlife. It's a pretty cool show. So, uh, yeah, I think that's it for my announcement. So let's go back to Brian. Come on back, Brian. <laughs> what would you like to leave with people today? And how do people find out more about you? And yeah, send them back over to you. What I like to leave with people is um, trust your trust your intuition, trust your own soul, um, turn within. I think there's we can be inspired by things. I think we don't really learn things. I think what we do is remember things. So as you listen to something, if it resonates with you, you know, trust that. There are I think two problems that most of us have. The two biggest problems on earth is we don't know who we are and we don't know why we're here. If you can figure out who you are and why you're here, I think you can get through this life much better. And so I go back to that person I was thinking about this morning who answered the questions in my group and said, I'm interested in overcoming my grief, but I'm not interested in learning about death or the afterlife. Death is a universal thing that we fear if we don't understand it. It's natural to fear because we're all headed towards it. So if we can understand it and put the afterlife into perspective, it just changes everything and don't be afraid because the, the good the news is going to sound too good it's going to sound too good to be true um so 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 trust i'm here to help anybody that would like help along that journey so you can feel free to reach out to me uh it's brian at grief to growth if you want to email me it's grief the number two growth website's grief to growth.com as sandra was saying i've got uh things there you can get for a small donation i also have things there you can get for free uh, you can join my Facebook group 
And for Sandra's listeners, you can go to grieftogrowth.com slash Sandra and pick up my latest ebook, uh, The Gems Book, which is the four steps I outlined really quickly, gratitude, exercise, mindfulness, and self-care. And you can start practicing that literally today. Wow. Thank you so much, Brian. You're so generous. And it's always so good to talk to you. I feel kind of bad. It's been so long since we've caught up, but it's been nice to be able to share this time with you. And I know there's lots of people that will listen and see this video. And if you're listening, by the way, on your favorite podcast and you'd rather see this interview and check out who this man is, you can easily go to YouTube, go to We Don't Die Radio 370. And that's with Brian. In closing, friends, again, just a reminder, our home base is wedontdie.com. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch or listen to this. You matter. Your journey matters. Your dreams matter. I know growing up, we think we should be doing this or we should be doing that. Let it all go and get in touch with who you really are. Take Brian up on his offer. Go to grieftogrowth.com slash Sandra and see what's there, but use everything you can to remember who you are. And like I said, what you're passionate about. One of my biggest fears is getting to the end of my life and having that doorway opening to the afterlife and realizing, oh, I I was an adventurer. Oh yes, I signed up for this and I could have done so much more. So I ask everybody, go out in those skinny branches, go after a dream, take one step in the direction of maybe something you fear or try something new. And there's just this incredible world beyond. You are supported, you are loved, you can't see them, but you got a powerhouse of friends and family and guides behind you really trying to encourage you. Like Brian said, take some time for mind, mindfulness, take some time, plug yourself in, quiet the mind and just see what's available. And again, go to grieftogrowth.com and check out all the good things that Brian offers. So in closing, my name is Sandra Champlain, and it always is my pleasure to be your host on We Don't Die Radio. I do believe that life is an education for the soul and that our lives here on earth are important. So I really want to thank you for listening or for watching, and we'll see you again soon.